Hi there and welcome to a short video on um, creating cohesive bodies of work. Um, those of you that follow me will know that um, this is something I teach in and also I really enjoy exploring and finding out what works and what doesn't work and why when you look at some people's websites or some uh, photo books or why when you go to exhibitions do some groups of images hold you for longer than others? Why when you go somewhere or look at a page somewhere do you sometimes think what on earth are these two all these photos doing together or um, why what what was the photographer trying to get from this uh, yeah what what I'm looking at so this is just a very short introduction to um, just have a quick look at maybe some of the things very briefly that I have a think about and I just thought I'd show you very quickly into my website here and in my creative portfolio I have all my um, creative work and I just wanted to show you very quickly um, some things that stand out. I'm very very hot on trying to make all my images sort of sit together and um, sort of work comfortably and on that basis I do choose only the ones that work together. If we have a look at Snowy Peak these were a few images that I took in um, the Peak District a couple of years ago what I've done is I've changed them all to black and white using the same post processing. I've worked with them all in the same crop, a sort of six by four standard. And um, I've kind of worked and I've picked the ones that I feel work together, but don't necessarily replicate each other. So when you look into my album, you see a diverse range of images, um, all very slightly different. That one and this one are quite similar, to be honest, but they are different enough. Um, they all have the same sort of feeling. So if you look at them all next to each other or in a group, um, you do see the, the same post processing. You do get the same feel of the same uh, location and the same process that was used. Um, have a look at just another one very quickly before I just take you into Lightroom to show you something. Um, let's have a look at a non black and white one. Um, Let's have a look at uh, yeah, reflections of Peru. These are reflections rather than ICM images. And you'll see there's not so many in here because one, I only wanted to put uh, images that were different, but I also, I wanted to make sure the whole thing worked cohesively. Now you can see at the top, I've run through um, the colors. So this is also something I think about is when I'm presenting what order the colors come in in, a, in an album. Um, but just again to run through each of these images is different but you get the same sort of feel that they sit next to each other in this case they're all square crops they're all color here and all the um all the reflections tend to be sort of heading in the same sort of direction that's not that important what i will just show you very quickly is um a an album on my website here called course attendees photos and these are all images taken from course attendees now every single one of these is different because it's come from a different person and so here it's not an, um, so much about making all the photos sit together but when i look at them in a slideshow i want them to move smoothly so this is something slightly different they they do all fit together but it only because i've placed them in a certain order so for example i've got all the water and the beachscapes um, together and then we move on to uh, objects in the water we then move on to some sort of more abstract but using water then we move on to some that are in the green and the in the woodlands then we have a couple that have sort of pinks and reds then i move on to landscapes which have objects and various then we have some more sort of gray abstract images here then we have some with a lot of color and it's just, you know, this is how I go through and I just sort of try and build these up. So again, we're going through the colour images. Then we drop to something a little bit more grey, black and white. We have some black and white ones here. And then we come into woodlands. And these tend to be more woodland images that I've tried to keep together again. And then we come out again, a bit more texture, come to more sort of colourful texture ones before we come to some that maybe don't fit anywhere else in it here. So that was just a very quick look at those and I'm just going to take you into Lightroom because I'm just working on something at the moment. 
I was away for the weekend and um, I've come back and I actually came back with over a thousand photos. I've narrowed it down with one stars to 604 possibles. I had to be quite ruthless. Um, and you might say, how on earth do you choose uh, maybe 12 images from all of these? And what I'm looking for is images that will sit together. Now, at the time, what I did was I took images of everything that captured my eye. I had images um, looking at the uh, breakwaters. I had images looking through the breakwaters. I took pictures of the um, the uh, seaweed. I took pictures of the breakers. I took pictures just of um, the, the, the details on the sand. I took pictures of the reflections. I took pictures of just the sea and the waves. So I've got a massive selection of images here. But what I will just show you very briefly is um, the first I went down to two, which brought me down to 115 images. <laughs> and then I went down to three stars, which gave me 67 images. And from, um, here we've still got, you can see I've started working in colours as well, uh, as well as black and whites, because I started trying to um, create a cohesive feel of the images that I wanted to choose. If we go to four star images, we are down to the ones that I would probably place on my website, um, although there's still a lot. Let's just have a look at five star images here. OK, so all of those, let's go back to the four stars. Here we have, um, just to show you very quickly, if I just put them all in a group. Let's just highlight them all if I can. There we go you will see there is a massive selection. So if we just knock out, um, I'm just going to take out some random ones at the moment, nothing in particular. Uh, let's just take out some random groups, pictures, so you can just see. Um, OK, you can still see there's quite a lot going on here. I've got black and white. So what I'm going to just show you here is we are going to look at um, only the black and white images here. OK, so I'm just going to pick out the black and white. And what I've done is I've edited them all in exactly the same um, Lightroom preset. I like doing a lot of my post processing in Lightroom. So let's just pick these ones up very quickly. Some of them might be duplicates. So what you've got here now is a selection of images, um, all post processed in the same way. So I want to done, I've gone through um, and I've gone through and I've tried to make them feel the same. Now, what you will see in here is that there are a number that are um, a 16 by 9 crop and a 6 by 4 crop. Now, as long as I've not just got one of these 16 by 9s, I don't mind including a few because when I place them in the album, you'll see uh, you would see how they would work. Some of them are a little bit uh, more. Some of them maybe don't fit together as well as some others. For example, this one kind of stands out um, as being very different to the rest. So if we were to narrow these down, so if I was to say, well, you know, some of these really aren't working, maybe this one, you know, this one is completely different to the rest. Let's take that one out. Um, and just for the sake of it right now, I'm just going to take the waves out as well. So I'm literally only left with the breakers. Um, I've had a play here. So this one's actually a multiple exposure. So I'm going to remove that from the, the as well. And then I start looking and saying, uh, are any of these sort of replicates? And I find these two kind of quite similar. Um, just looking at it this way, I find this one more interesting than that one. Now, I, I generally try to look for an even number. So here we've got, uh, what have we got? We haven't got an odd even number here. We've got 8, 9, 10, 11, 11. So I'd probably be looking for 10 or 12 because then they sit in nice rows. Um, Let's have a look. If you're going to look for ones that are slightly not the same, again, this one does stand out because it's not uh, the breakers alone. So there you have a group of images that could go through. Now, I'd work on these slightly more because I start looking for things that stand out that don't make them fit together. And this one is quite light, so I might dull it down again. I start looking and saying, oh, those three are um, 16 by 9 crops that's actually a crop in of that one so I might say well let's get rid of that one okay um we've got nine again I mentioned uh odd numbers even numbers but if it's nine then it's fine it still sits in three rows so as you can see I've just worked through from around 600 down very quickly just to give you a feel for what I'm looking for I'm looking for 
a feel in the images that they all match each other. I'm looking for no replication, nothing that seems, seems too samey, otherwise what's the point in including them both? I'm re reducing the impact that they have. Um, and then I will post process so that they seem to have um, a sort of joined up feel between them all. So if you've enjoyed this, um, I would uh, love you to have a look at any of the um, courses that I have online. I'm actually just about to start a cohesive projects course, which is kind of why I'm just putting this up on um, YouTube right now. Um, if you're interested, I do uh, three sessions over the space of three weeks. The evenings tend to run between an hour and a half and two hours. Small groups, only six people per group maximum. Um, the first week I give a presentation all about looking at uh, sort of the, the um, ideas and all the sort of factors behind what makes a cohesive project. This has been a very, very quick run through. I go in much more depth. Um, so the first evening I give a presentation, loads of chances to answer questions, whatever you want. Um, it's all my uh, courses are always a two way communication. I always uh, want people to ask as we go along. I don't just dictate to anybody. And then the second and third week, um, I ask you to do homework based on what you've learned in the first week and then we build on it in the second week. And you return that homework and that forms the basis of the following two weeks um, sessions. And so what I will be doing is giving you one to one feedback in the group. And it's lovely because you get to see the rest of the group's images, hear the challenges everybody else felt. And honestly, probably 95 percent of people on my courses say that one of the biggest things that they get out of my courses is not only the learning, but the learning from other people as well, because you kind of hear of everybody else's challenges. And you also get some better ideas of what uh, you might be able to try. So I'd love you to join me if you would like. I have four spaces left. Um, the course starts next week, um, beginning of July. Have a look. Um, the last two slides of this presentation give you all the information you would need. Drop me an email if you're interested. Um, if places do fill up, I will start a wait list for a second set of dates that I will post on um, my web page as soon as I'm ready. I'd love you to join me. So um, I look forward to seeing you on another YouTube video. And um, yeah. Go and have fun.